Welcome once again, Vape Fam, to a brand new installment of the Visual Vapor Reviews. So today we're going to be doing a bit of a topic uh, Monday and Tuesday because I got all sorts of stuff to chat about. We're going to do um, something we haven't done in a while, so the topic Tuesday as I was saying. And we'll try and uh, get a blanket term going. Sorry, I had to turn off the light in there. Can't leave that going. All right, so a topic Tuesday, as you guys well know, is where we pick a topic and we chit chat about it to try and explain it and give you some insight on things you might not have otherwise known about these topics. So we're going to be covering tanks, different types of tanks that have been added to kind of a revised divi division. So we're going to be talking about that. So this revised division, revi uh, this revised division of tanks will be um, kind of a way to help you guys out, so you can understand basic terminology on this stuff. So why don't we get into that? So we're going to talk about all the different types of tanks. There are main, two different uh, main kinds of tanks, but the second kind of tank is kind of a blanket term for the various types of those. So we'll start off with regular tanks. Regular tanks fall into two kinds of categories, sub-ohm and above-ohm. Sub-ohm tanks use below one ohm resistance, while above-ohm tanks use one and higher ohm or resistance tank, uh, coils. So basically a tank, all you need to know before we get into the whole resistance thing, a tank is nothing more than a replaceable coil head, which is nothing more than a metal casing with cotton surrounding it and a coil on the inner layer and a single hole going up and down through the air for, for the airflow. That has a connection point that connects to the base plate that screws onto your vaporizer. Then a glass tank goes over that to hold the liquid and then a chimney screws into the top of that which leads up to your mouthpiece. The glass piece is what holds the liquid and saturates your cotton. The cotton soaks up and then it's heat and vaporized by the coil that heats up rapidly, such as this way. But that's pretty simple. And then above ohm and below ohm or sub ohm coils are just different resistances for different types of flavors or cloud, cloud production. Now, the next term we're going to get into Oh, a torch, cool. <laughs> Next term we're gonna get into is the blanket term, RBA or rebuildable atomizers. Those are the bare bones, the very easiest things you can get your hands on when you want a quick, clean vape. Now, rebuildables are essentially the most original type of vaporizer. You connect, you're basically connecting two ends of a wire to a battery and then putting cotton through that which is soaked, soaked in liquid and vaporized exceptionally fast. So it's a pretty simple, pretty easy term to get familiar with. So RBA kind of blankets everything that has to do with rebuildables. The first subtopic would be an RDA, where you build your coils, you install them on the positive and negative side, connect it to your tank, put some cotton in the middle of the coil, soak it, uh, soak it in liquid, and vape it from there. Your mouth is right over the, va uh, the your mouth is right over the vapor or the coils, which means there's very little time for it to dissipate, giving you a very rich and dense, thick vapor. There isn't really much you can say about it besides the fact that it's exceedingly well uh, good in performance, and such as this. But that's not what I'm vaping on. I'm not vaping on, R on an RDA. Well, I am, but we'll get into that in a minute. The downside, and the pros to an RDA is immense vapor and flavor production. You get amazing instant flavor production nonstop. But the con to it is you have to find, every four or five hits, you have to grab your bottle of juice and you have to drip on it until it's soaked. But, and so every four or five hits, you're looking for your bottle of juice. That brings us to the next section, which is RTAs, Rebuildable Tank Atomizers. Rebuildable Tank Atomizers are basically a combination, or if a tank and an RDA had a baby together, that would be the best way I could describe it. 
you have your tank section, then you have your deck section, you, fill, you wick it up as normal like an RDA, and then you put a tank section over it, and the cotton soaks it up and vaporizes it through the tank. So it's a pretty simple, easy way to vape. You get the production of an R, the production and performance of an RDA with the convenience of not having to drip all the time on your tank. But there's a lot of cons to that. Essentially, your cotton is the only thing stopping it from leaking. It's the biggest con: leaks from an RTA. But there is another way to combat that. That brings us to our next section in the blanket terms of RBAs. That would be an RDTA, Rebuildable Dripping Tank Atomizer. So instead of having your deck in the bottom and the tank in the middle, you have your tank move to the bottom, your deck move to the middle, and your airflow on the top. That reduces leaking drastically unless it's tilted on its side. So basically you have a deck section in the middle the cotton feeds down into the tank so when instead of dripping on it or letting it soak in you just tilt it so it soaks up into the cotton that gives you plenty of wick saturation it minimizes a lot of the pros and cons of rdas and rtas at the same time you get the production and uh, production and performance of an rda without all the cons but the biggest problem is all the pressure can cause that to uh, all, a lot of leaks to happen if it's on its side that brings us into the next godsend, or the latest edition, which is the newest revision in the RBA, uh, RBA section. That would be RSAs. RSAs are rebuildable squonking atomizers. That's where squonking comes in. Squonking, like this, is where you have a tank, a bottle in the side next to your battery, and you just squish it so it feeds up into your RDA, saturating your wicks until it's ready to vape. That gives you a lot of ability to not have to worry about looking for your bottle of juice, unless of course it's empty, and allows you to enjoy the same performance of an RDA without having to drip all the time or worry about leaking or pressure, pressure formats. RSAs are a really good addition to the, to the um, rebuildable family. It gives a lot of flavor production just like you're using an RDA still get all the mechanical aspects of an RDA and the flavor production without all the problems. In fact, it's probably one of the best ways to use a rebuildable, in my opinion, that is. Of course, it's all subjective. You do it how you like to do it. Some people are favor uh, favoring the RTAs or the RDTAs or the RDAs themselves, some people favor those. I prefer Squonk because I don't have to worry about dripping on it all the time. I can just vape it until it's done. I can get about 10 to 15 hits off this thing without having to squonk it. And I'm talking monster rips too. Look at that, that's one. We're gonna do 15 hits just to show you guys. No squonking, squonk bottles here, so my hand is going to be over it. If you see my hand go behind here at all, you'll know I squonked. So, see, no squonk bottle on this side. It's on this side. So I'm going to cover it only with my hand. So I'm going to take as many hits until I notice it's dry. We've already done the first one. So, two, uh, number two. Number three. Number four. Five, six, and we're still going. Hold on, I'm gonna take a breather. Hand off the hand off the box. Ready? Hand off the box. No squonking whatsoever. So take a small breather. We're at six. Number seven. No hand on the squonk. Eight, nine. Ten, eleven. No squonk, still nothing. See, no squonking. Twelve. Thirteen, flavors dying off. Fourteen. 15, definitely time to squonk. All right, guys, so I got 15 hits off this mother chucker. Let's squonk her up and give her a bottle full. Make sure she's squonking. Yep. There we go.
She's all squonked up. Let's see if she gets her flavor back. Oh yeah, guys. I used that thing until... <coughs> Hold up, Bell. There we go. All right. So I used that thing until the flavor was gone. 15 hits, nonstop, one right after the other, until it was t until the flavor was absolutely gone, and that's when I squonked it. Normally, with a normal RDA, you don't get 15 hits without dripping. No way. In between your drips, there's no way you get 15 hits. So I'm going to give this a filler. I'm going to fill up this squonk bottle real quick. So I'm just going to set this down. I'm just going to fill this up real quick so you guys can see how that works. So in my last video, I did do a quick um, show of how to fill it. I just blow down into it to um, stop the juice from leaking or getting everywhere because there's usually some juice left behind inside the, um, fill, uh, inside the tube. So I'm just going to grab this, fill her up. And mind you, this bottle has lasted me for three days non-stop vaping. I've tested it. I haven't, I haven't filled this bottle until, since, the, in, since the last video, which was about three days ago if um, I ended up uploading it. I uploaded it yes, uh, yesterday because I didn't have time to upload it. I was really busy and stuff. So I'm sorry to you guys about that. There we go. Nice and full. Hopefully she won't overfill. <laughs> when I go to put this on. So you want to make sure your finger is covering that hole to prevent um, overspill or leaking. Now I will, I do notice that there is a little bit of juice on here and that's partially my fault, but I'll clean that up real quick. Try and clean my fingers off while I'm at it. There we go. That should be good. There we go, a full squonk bottle of my uh, Sweet Tooth Clown. So I just angle that in, and there we go, full squonker, ready to go and ready to vape. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what's good about it. I don't have to worry about this. I can take 15 hits and not worry about squonking on it, but I am squonking it up right now because I did do a full um, coil full, so I am going to squonk it a little bit, make sure it's got its good flavor. And sure enough, she chucks clouds. She's chucking. This mother chucker right here. <laughs> and note, I do not swear that often in these videos. Sometimes they do slip out. But in, in terms of um, vape-related swears, <laughs> this is a mother chucker right here. The mother of all chuckers. The clouds that come off this thing are never disappointing. So I talked to you guys about the different kinds of tanks there are and what you can get. You gotta decide be, uh, which one's the right one for you because everything that has to do with vaping is subje subjective to your opinion, your taste, and your flavor. You can customize it any way you want. It's all up to you. You don't have to worry about just having a single little, uh, a single pen or a single box mod it doesn't matter everyone has their own ability to choose what they like and that's what's so revolutionary about it you don't have the same everyone's puffing on the same cigarette that's disgusting you don't have any dif differences you're all doing the same thing vaping you have choices you have abilities you have the ability to customize you have the choice whether to do nicotine or no nicotine it's all you that's what's so beautiful about it. It offers a world of options. And that's what I love about it. We're not puff, all puffing on the same white and yellow sticks. <clears throat> We're enjoying flavors that are different from everyone else. We're enjoying things that <clears throat> smokers are limited to. Smokers don't have the same <clears throat> thing. Yeah, they have menthol and tobacco and cherry and grapes and stuff like that in their cigarette flavors but they don't have what we have. We have access to every flavor in the world. And that's all part and partial of vaping. That's what makes it so fun, what makes it such an eye-opening experience. <clears throat> that's why I'm completely against the FDA banning flavors. Yeah, it makes it a slightly more attractive to younger ages. Yeah, but that's not what they're aimed at. They're aimed at smokers who are looking for something to help them quit, to give them something to enjoy without all the risks of smoking. 
FDA want, the FDA wants to ban all the flavors down to tobacco and menthol. That's it. That's all we'd be left with if the FDA goes through with this. And it would not be a fun vaping community. We would be bored. We would be limited. We'd be, our freedom is taken away by that. And it's not fair. So when, if you're voting or towards the vaping FDA flavor ban, vote against it. Vote no, because that's not what vaping is. Vaping isn't supposed to be just tobacco or menthol, black or white. It's supposed to be a rainbow of colors. Hell, you guys accept every, every form of nationality nowadays. The United States is supposed to be a place of freedom. Hell, New Hampshire even says, live free or die. Well, if we can't live free with our flavors, then are we supposed to die? Because putting all these limits yes i understand yes you are free to go ahead walk down the road and kill someone but that does not excuse you from the consequences of what happens the moment you pull that trigger the moment you do, you decide that you want to take someone's life you accept the consequences you've decided that you are willing to risk your life to end someone else's with that kind of choice it comes with a responsibility do you make that choice do you act on that impulse? Do you walk down the road and take that person's life? It's not fair to do that to someone, to take away someone else's freedom. It infringes upon the basic rights of the United States to take away the freedom of someone's life or to take away the freedom of someone's cho choice of flavor. It's the same basic thing. No, it's a different scale and no, it does not make it right to go down the road and kill someone. That was a mere example. But still, it might as, you might as well be taking away the rights of someone else. By voting to remove flavors, you are voting to remove the freedom of someone else. That doesn't mean you can't go and manufacture your own flavors, of course, but you can't sell them. You can't distribute them. You'd have to make your, make your own. And that, that's just not fair to people. It would make it a whole lot harder to, to enjoy your vaporizers and your flavors and your clouds. Every vapor I know has been at one point or another a smoker or someone who's just looking at it for the hobby aspect. Some people have the nicotine addiction to the point where they need a puff of something every day. That's not, a, not the best thing. It's not the worst thing either. Everyone's entitled to their own choices. Vaping gives you the freedom to choose between nicotine and no nicotine. Smoking doesn't. So. I ask you to vote no against the flavor ban. Just a little thought, guys. Figured I'd put that out there for y'all. But in any case, there's a lot going on with visual vapor reviews. There's a lot to um, talk about. There's a lot to work on. And it all takes time. Hi. I'm going back to the library. Why? Why are you going back to the library? Because she has to come to the All right. Well, I'll be right with you guys. Anyway, guys, that about wraps it up for the Visual Vapor Reviews. Until next time, I'm your host, Michael Cobb, and these have been the Visual Vapor Reviews. Peace, guys.